So, here I am on my back porch again. I still have not cleaned up around here, but uh, oh well, I'll get to it. In the meantime, I'm going to look at this mower. It's a super nice day out here. The sun's about to come out. It's about 9.30 or 10 in the morning, 9.30 I think, but uh, still kind of cool out here, but it's going to be a super nice day. And what I'm going to do here, I have this uh, Husqvarna uh, mower with the color engine and I'm going to prepare it for the season so I'll show you what to do um, giving it a, a tune-up changing the oil you know probably sharpening the blade I'm just gonna get this thing totally ready for the guy to start the season so let's take a look at it so here's the mower you can see it's the Husqvarna has a 675, it's an all-wheel drive, uh, Kohler engine on it. And sure, it looks a little dirty, but it's an overall great shape. I have not started it yet, but the guy said he was gonna try to mow his yard and it was running uh, kind of rough. He said, I think it was uh, pulsating, uh, you know, going up and down, whatever. So I'm gonna go through and clean the carburetor out and give it an overall tune-up form. So I tried to crank it over and the only way I could get it to start was by spraying some carb cleaner down into the carburetor. Um, and it would crank over and of course die right away. So, so I know the carburetor needs to be cleaned out. I'm gonna do that first before I tune everything up. And I looked over, it looks like the oil was a tiny bit low. Uh, not bad, at least there was oil in it, but uh, I will be changing the oil. So I'll take the carburetor off. I'm going to go ahead and take the top off. Take your starter pull off. Yeah, so it looks like there there is some corrosion here. And so I'll be taking this apart and cleaning everything off and regapping here pretty soon but let's uh, let's get the carburetor first so we can get it started and see how it sounds plus get it warmed up a little bit and it's easier to change the oil that way all right so let's take the fuel line off take off the clip I like to clamp this thing down It does have a fuel a full tank of gas in there. And the hose is pretty tight. Always twist it back and forth first. Loosen it up, and then you can take it off. And there you go. And that actually looks like it has a a crack in it. But I think it's long enough. Yeah, I can cut that off. And then. But anyway, let's see. Take the linkage off. And there's the carburetor. So let's clean this off. Um, the gaskets look okay front end back this one needs to be cleaned on this side but the gaskets look good they're not cracked so it's just dirty and I'll take this apart and do the the usual cleaning if you'd like to see this in detail I know I have another video out there on how to clean a carburetor uh, so yeah. so look for it on my site I can even include a link to one uh, for a couple of them on clean carburetors. So there's the clean carburetor. Did the usual stuff, put it all back together. Let's remount this. Make sure your gasket's on there. I think I'm gonna try to clean some of that out. Good and clean. Hoses are still attached. Slide this thing on.
And next what I like to do while all this is off, like I said, I want to clean off the flywheel. It looks like uh, it's really not in that bad a shape, but I like to clean them off and re-gap uh, the magneto also, along with cleaning out the uh, cleaning up the spark plug. So there's the magneto, and you can see on this side there's some minor corrosion buildup, and and we'll clean the flywheel off plus clean off the studs here, that's where it's grounding. So, we need to make sure all that's cleaned up. This is not that bad at all. Uh, definitely have seen worse, especially if a mower has been sitting outside and been rained on. Oh man, so much corrosion gets built up over here and a lot of people overlook that. But, uh, so I just like to get a piece of sandpaper like this. This came off of a belt grinder. Uh, a belt sander and I like them because they're you can get the different grits but you can see the backing on it's real tough uh, so it's not just sandpaper it's it's pretty sturdy and you can go through and clean off these contacts there you go and on the flywheel it's almost a perfect size. We'll put this back on. set the gap you can use a business card I use this little tag that I used to tag my equipment with but uh, it's about the the thickness of a business card slide it in lightly center it don't don't push it too far you just want to lightly hold that on there perfect is on. Don't forget to put your little fixture back on. Now let's take the spark plug off. Looks like there's some carbon buildup around the edges, but there where the electrode is, it looks like it's been burning fairly well. Um, I would say this carbon deposit started building up after the carb um, started to get clogged and it would only run with the choke on, that kind of thing. So the spark plug looks good. But let's clean it off for them. I told him I would probably uh, clean the spark plug. He said he had this done last year. So the spark plug's only a year old. And I like to use them for at least two seasons. Unless it's been running abnormally, then I go ahead and change the spark plug out. But this one looks like it's actually in pretty good shape. I think spark plugs last a little longer than everybody's expecting. Everybody, <laughs> which I mean, to each his own. Uh, a lot of people change the spark plug every season, and that's that's a good practice. You know what can I say? It's a it's a good practice, and it's a cheap fix, right? It's a spark plug anywhere from you know three to seven dollars usually you know four or five whatever but 
but this one's actually in pretty good shape and I will recheck the gap it looks like it's right on here we go right at 30 thousandths yeah with the, with the spark plugs I think it's just as important to clean off your magneto and your flywheel it's just as important because if your magneto and flywheel is all corroded a new spark plug is not going to make that big of a difference it'll make a difference but but <laughs> won't optimize it if you know what I mean so let's put the covers back on and your pull rope this one looks to be in good shape a lot of times if it's if you're pulling it and it feels gritty I get some WD-40 and there's a couple of spots in here right here where the uh, where your coil spring mounts and usually there's a little hole just something in here where you can spray some WD-40 in it and rotate it around So that makes sure your uh, your coil spring is not corroding in there. Keep it running smooth, especially if it has been left out in the rain. You really gotta. Spray some WD-40 in there and clean it out or you will be replacing it one of these days. Okay, well let's start it up, see how it sounds, get it warmed up, and uh, then we'll change the oil. Oh, I gotta put the spark plug back on. Sounds like it's running really good and strong. And this filter, it looks good, but there is a crack on the end here. So we'll be replacing that. So when you're changing the oil, there's a, a few different ways you can do this. Um, One way you can get up underneath, and on this one, you know, there's usually a plug uh, underneath, and you can go in there and, you know, make sure the spark plug is off when you're messing with the blade and all that good stuff, and you can, you know, take the oil plug off and let it drain out the bottom. Or you can take this off, tilt the mow over, and let it leak out this way, or you can take the pump you know with a suction pump with a hose and, and pump it out now in this case this is an all-wheel drive and if you take up take a look underneath you can see all the the belts and all the extra stuff you have to take out to reach that oil plug and it it can be a pain in the butt so with this I either uh, with these in Honda's Honda's you you, you turn over like that this one has a the, the short little oil spout here so when you turn it over it might get a little messy just make sure you can wipe it all off this one I'm just gonna go ahead and tilt it and drain it um, I used to have a pump and I don't know where it is somebody must have borrowed it <laughs> so I'm just gonna tilt this one we'll get the oil changed uh, and then look under and look at the blade and see if we can sharpen it but first the oil. So I've tilted it back over and you can see it does get kind of messy. 
but it drains out pretty easily especially if you warm up the engine a little bit and but it does make life a lot easier because I'm going to give this mower a good cleaning form also before so it's a little mess not bad now there's always the big question what oil to to put in there some guys put 10w30 um, in some engines like a Honda it calls for 1030 10w30 uh, I like just plain 30 weight given that uh, the part of the country we're in we are in Texas so it gets really hot and with this if I put 10w30 in there it will tend to burn a little oil um, not much but but it could you you just got to constantly check it but but on these and Briggs and Stratton's a lot of them they you know given the, the temperature that we deal with here in Texas they call for 30 weight so that's what I usually put And when you're filling this stuff up, do not put too much. Putting too much oil can be very bad. That looks like that's it. So you can see I have the mower turned on its side, partially. And you can see the blade here not too bad there's just a couple of nicks almost really don't need it but yeah over here on the end so let's take this off so in this case this is a 9 16 now before you start messing with the blade, make sure your spark plug is disconnected and uh, brace on the blade. I can't do this with my hands full, but just hold on to the blade and, uh, and loosen this up. If it's too tight, try a, you know a, uh, an impact wrench if you have it or uh, breaker bar, but let me get this blade off So this is where I usually sharpen my blades. It looks like somebody's doing some woodwork in here in the past couple of days It's covered in sawdust um, But I'll go through here Sharpen this part of the blade and this one is not bad. So, you know, I want to take off the least material as I can and it will keep it in balance. If this was a in really bad shape with a lot of nicks and gorges where you really have to you know grind it down uh, well you're taking off a lot of metal and you're gonna have to go and balance the blade uh, and that's putting a, a center fixture underneath and see which way it's see its weight tilts you know and then you can balance you know, by taking a little off, see those little notches here at the top. You can take, you know, where it's too heavy, you can take some off here or here, whichever it needs. Uh, but let me get this thing sharpened. All right, so I just finished. You can see there, it's wasn't too bad. Now, usually, of course, do that side mainly on that side and and a tiny bit on the back side and it really gets it a good edge and this edge I mean doesn't have to be knife sharp because while you're out there mowing it's going to start to dull and it actually dulls pretty fast um, but when it gets back to the regular you know 
that's not bad as long as as long as there's no nicks and and bumps from rocks then it it does pretty good so when you're putting this back on just take note of you know make sure you put it back on the way it was if you have any question uh, see the blade side uh, when you're looking from underneath the mower like this it it rotates uh, counterclockwise if you're looking at from the top of course it looks like it's clockwise but uh, but put it on like that and when you crank it up um, you'll know if it's out of balance you'll you'll feel the the vibration and it'll go all the way up to the handle uh, but it should be running smooth if you have the blades balanced and sharpened well that is about it that is how I uh, prepare a a mower for the season. Uh, the customer already came and picked up his mower. He was, he was happy. Uh, the only thing I would do different if uh, I would go ahead and change the spark plug every year if you want. Uh, that's that's a judgment call. If it makes your customer happy, then do it. It's a cheap fix. So that's it in a nutshell. That will keep uh, those mowers running for a long time. Just take good care of them.